Hi everybody, Ian Hill here. Looking forward to meeting and seeing all of you on Friday. But before we got to Friday, I thought I'd send you a little video and give you a thumbnail on what you can expect and maybe some things you can do to prepare. A number of weeks ago, I got a phone call from Jennifer asking if I would come to Hillendale and be a part of this retreat. You see, her and I had met at the um, statewide city manager's conference. And I listened to what she had to say. You know, we get these calls all the time. People asking if I come and work with the municipality. And we've worked with some 383 in just the last few years. Hundreds of thousands of public servants having gone through our other programs as well. I believe that, that you're the key to the success of a community in the 21st century. And when you do an exploration of history, you come to find that people just like you are who help build a great society. Why? Because you touch every citizen collectively you touch every citizen from cradle to grave. Your work is noble, your work is honorable. That's what Plato said. He said, no greater life lived than that committed to public service. So I take this very, very seriously. So when she asked if I would come, I really had to pay attention because I don't like to come to places where, where I'm gonna waste anyone's time or where they're gonna waste mine. And after talking to her and Renee, I thought maybe that we could add some value. And they believed the same. But I think, personally, that these retreats often can be a waste of time. That doesn't mean the speakers aren't good, and that doesn't mean the audience aren't good-hearted, good, good, good well, well-meaning people. It just means that cognitively and literally, that, that information that you get in a retreat is gone within seven to ten days. So I said to Renee and Jennifer, I'll only come if we follow a certain process, a process that we've developed over a period of time and we found to be highly effective. And they agreed. The first step in that process was interviewing. So I interviewed a number of you and I really enjoyed the phone chats that I had. They were insightful and thoughtful and they were direct. Now because they were confidential conversations, I can't necessarily share with you what they said. But I can say this. I learned a lot about what's going on in 4.5 square miles. You've got a ton going on. One of you said this. I think, I think he'd be okay with them. I think they would be okay with me sharing it. That you're going from Mayberry to Metropolis. And frankly, every one of you said that. You didn't say those words, but every one of you said that to one level or another. That you're in a time of significant transformation, both in the four walls of your municipality municipal government, and outside. Well, and with that comes all kinds of growing pains and all kinds of challenges. And so those interviews help gain insight that would help me prepare for the day. What are we going to talk about in the day? Well, we're going to talk about the three competencies of today's effective public sector leader, executive leader. Well, how do you know what those three competencies are? Well, through all of the vetting and information and, most importantly, practical application in the hundreds of departments that we've worked with. Three competencies. One, agent of change. You got to know how to change something in today's day and age. Marshalling human capital through change. Secondly, you got to be a systems thinker. There's not enough time, energy, or effort to get done everything you want to get done. So systems are the key, and Archimedes was right when he said, give me a place to stand and I will move the world. He was talking about his fulcrum and his lever. He was talking about an effective systems. Systems are force multipliers. Wheatley said that the systems thinkers of today are the key to humanity in the 21st century. And then finally, catalyst for responsibility. Do you know how to get other people to do more and like it? take greater responsibility and ownership than they did the day before and like it. And all of that within the context of today, because the leadership approaches and styles of your past may not be the, the keys to victory today. So that's what we're going to talk about. How can you be a more effective leader? But frankly, we go to retreats, we go to workshops, seminars, even books and tapes. Those passive learning models, within seven to ten days of hearing or seeing or talking the information, it's gone. That is, that, that, that's a fact. So this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to hang out on Friday, but then we're going to spend 30 days together unpacking that information. 
through the wonders of technology. We're going to work to wrap around you and help move you to your leadership best. There will be videos and emails, exercises, but, but all of them being very mindful of how busy you are in your 4.5 square miles. How busy you are. And so we've, we've done this in such a way where it's blips of information. One and two minute videos, exercises that can last throughout the week so that you can access it. If you can allocate 10 to 15 minutes a day, then you can really take advantage of the model. Now, let's say you can't. No problems. Everything is being webbed on a ha uh, uh, everything is being housed on a web platform that you can access at any time from anywhere, and your staff can access it as well, so that you can use the information and share it with them. And then one final piece, I'm going to be asking each one of you to make a commitment. A commitment? A commitment to what? A commitment to what you are going to work to get better at over the next 30 days. You see. Drucker was right. He said that every couple hundred years in Western history, society rearranged itself. And the society that the grandparents knew was completely different than the society the grandchildren know. He called it a time of transformation. I think we're in one of those times. So what does that mean from a leadership standpoint? That means we must ask ourselves the question, are the leadership approaches I'm using what the times require? So notice there's no value judgment there, good, bad. Just are the approaches I'm using the ones that would be most effective today to marshal the human capital around me towards a common goal? So we're going to talk about some leadership competencies. We're going to talk about how to be a, an effective leader in the 21st century. And then I'm going to ask you, what are you going to commit to improving on? Mm, we all have room to grow. I know I do. So what's that one thing? Can you imagine if all of us in the room, starting with Renee, if all of us in the room picked out one thing and focused on getting better at it for 30 days, don't you agree with me by the 31st day, we'd be better as, a, as an individual but also as a collective. And you being better as a collective means that your employees will be better as a collective. And then your employees getting better as a collective means that what? The community gets better because you touch every citizen from cradle to grave. So that's what we're going to be doing in a thumbnail. I look forward to hanging out with you. I look forward to spending time with you, not just on Friday, but for the next 30 days. If you have any questions or comments, my email is right there on the bottom of the screen. Shoot me a note, and I'll look forward to seeing you on Friday. Take care, everybody.